So once we've created a map, we're probably not just sharing that, we're probably sharing it in a wrapper that we refer to as a web app. And web apps aren't just for web maps, as you'll see in um, this next segment. Um, there are a lot of applications in the platform. I'm sure when you open that app launcher button, there's always a new one that appears um, with every upgrade and every update cycle. And sometimes it's hard to get your bearings on what app do I use uh, for the job that I've been asked to do. So I've set the, the audacious task to uh, my colleagues Fran and Carol to cover as many apps as possible in seven minutes. So buckle in as we go into morning tea with this last demonstration. We're going to be covering a bit of ground very, very quickly. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Carol and Fran to talk about what's new across the different web apps in the platform. Thanks, Ed. So with the latest update of ArcGIS Online, it's brought new templates and template updates to instant apps. Up on the screen, we see the new template manager. Manager that's now out of beta. It lets you locate, view, and filter records on a map or table, as well as make changes to editable feature layers. One use case for this app is to use it to simplify the review process of collected data using other apps like Survey123 and ArcGIS field maps. So here you can quickly toggle between the different layers and edit them all while seeing where they're located on your map. Another exciting update is that the sidebar app now supports oriented imagery, allowing you to interact with images taking, taken from any angle. Now we'll move on to dashboards. Dashboards offer user-friendly data visualization and in this demo, I've crafted a simple one about a Canterbury farm and its assets. Let's explore the newest features together. When opening the dashboard, a splash screen introduces its purpose and organization details, such as background information, terms of use, or even disclaimers. This could serve as an informative buffer for loading the dashboard, and it can be configured for mobile dashboard views as well. Similar to splash screens, we've got information windows within the dashboard. This can provide users with extra background information and resources. You can now utilize dynamic text in your dashboard elements, such as the header element here. I have included modification date, time zone, and the title, title from the dashboard item. To utilize this new functionality, just click insert curly brackets on the left. The latest release includes time zone support, which enables you to specify New Zealand time zone for date and time values appearing in the dashboard, regardless of the viewer's location. So this can ensure the accurate representation of your data. Another app I am going to show you is Business Analyst, which helps in decision making for market planning, site selection, and customer segmentation by combining Stats New Zealand Census data with map-based analytics. In today's demo, we will explore the revamped site suitability analysis workflow, which automatically ranks and scores site based on the criteria on the left. You can configure how the workflow can scores your sites by adjusting the subjective weight, changing the scoring method, or the final score scale. As a result, you will receive a dynamic summary, histogram, bubble chart, and a table, which will state the site that scores the highest based on the criteria. The latest update of Experience Builder includes enhancement on various widgets. Let's start with the Business Analyst widget, which specializes in creating and viewing infographics. Here, I have added a custom instruction where the users need to engage with the list or the map first before viewing infographics. Next, we've got Near Me widget, which functions similarly to the Situational Awareness widget in the Web App Builder. This one assists me in finding nearby features and I'm looking to find nearby supermarkets. With its improved performance using list virtualizations, we could see the result with visual representations of the feature symbology. Next, we've got select widget, 
which offers more advanced capabilities by allowing you to select features based on a drawing as well as its attributes. As demonstrated, I'm selecting features of supermarkets by the brand. Plus, a group option has been added to the filter widget where you can filter multiple layers based on a common value using SQL Expression Builder. The example here, I am filtering all my layers in my web map based on the suburb data. Now let's explore the sister product of ArcGIS Story Maps called Briefings. This one allows you to create interactive slide based presentations that you can take offline on your mobile tablets. In Briefings, you can interact with dynamic maps, 3D scenes, as well as embedded content such as ArcGIS apps. To interact with maps without an internet, internet connection, you will need to upload a mobile map package or scene package. Back to you, friend. So as we've seen in earlier demonstrations, some challenges we can't tackle on our own. Collaboration is crucial, and ArcGIS Hub is the tool that brings it all together by creating a one-stop shop for content, team collaboration, and engagement. So let's create a hub together. First, let's give our hub a name and I'll just call it my initiative. We will leverage the ArcGIS capabilities to create a space for our, par for our partners working on this initiative. We've set up the team workspace by creating teams and adding people to those teams. Now we can add data for our contributors to access. Adding data, adding the content to our hub is as easy as navigating <coughs> our existing content, our organizations, or publicly available data. So we'll just select the ones we want to add to share with our teams of collaborators. Now we can see all the data we have curated, and these aren't copies. We're streaming data straight from the source, so there's no need to continuously update it. And here you've seen quickly how easy it is to create a hub site, connect your teams of collaborators, and link existing content. The integration of ArcGIS with Microsoft 365 extends the ArcGIS tools and mapping capabilities to your Microsoft tools like Excel, Teams, and Power BI. In the latest update, you can see the new icons in the ArcGIS tab, which is available once you've downloaded the ArcGIS add-in. With ArcGIS for Excel, you can quickly create a map from your data, geocode locations, and get addresses from XY coordinates and more. You can explore the different options in the Function Builder tab, which guides you through the process, or insert formulas straight onto your spreadsheet. So we'll just get the addresses from these XY coordinates. And it's as easy as that. You can also create drive time buffers, which get created here and uploaded straight onto your ArcGIS online. More capabilities are available in the ArcGIS for Power BI Visual, which ships out of the box with nothing to install. We're excited to see you explore these tools. Thank you. That was fantastic, Fred and Carol. Great job. So I guess to round us off, um, a little bit of a recap there. Um, we, we did either want to terrify you or amaze you with the Excel piece at the very end, um, putting the hands of GIS into Microsoft users everywhere. But just a bit of a recap on, on what we saw across each of those different apps. Starting with Instant Apps, you saw Oriented Imagery. If that's something that still is a little bit confusing, um, hang around, we've got a, a section on that in, in part two, showing you how you can get started straight away with using it in your organisation. Also, editing tables of data using that manager template out of beta. 
Right? It's a really simple, straightforward tool to put into the hands of people who maybe don't know what GIS is, but they know what a table is because they've been using spreadsheets for a while. We then went across into dashboards, and we know that dashboards are used by many of you in this room for really important reporting purposes. So being able to have provenance information of what's being displayed in that dashboard before they even go to it, or even how to use it, is, is really key. So having that splash screen there, and also the ability to have time zones um, updating, reflected on what the users are accessing it from, not necessarily what the data is stamped with. We then went across into Business Analyst, an app we haven't shown too much in the past, but being able to leverage these same content data sources you're using in web maps, things like um, demographic information, being able to use applications like Business Analyst and the web to do things that otherwise would be a very um, long session in ArcGIS Pro. We then went through into Experience Builder, the group filter widget capability is there. We know a lot of you have been hanging on to Web App Builder because of that, but you saw Carol um, show off that that is now ready to use inside um, Experience Builder. We then went into story maps. Um, briefings are, as Carol said, that sister or brother product to um, the, the story maps web. You can take story maps and open them from your mobile device offline now. That's definitely an alternative to that PDF um, export of your slide deck that um, you may have used in, in the past. So definitely have a, a go with that inside your organisation. We then touched on Hub. Hub to, as an app to manage content, but also manage access to that content. So if you're not using Hub already, um, join the masses who have already um, started the year of the Hub, it seems, and create a Hub site inside your organisation, um, either to provide that central intranet site equivalent or just to uh, manage content across multiple stakeholder groups. And then, of course, going into Excel and the, the wider Microsoft space, if you aren't um, using some of the, the 365 capabilities with Esri right now, definitely something to go back to the office and, and have an excuse to open up Excel for. Um, putting geocoding into the hands of those who, who aren't GIS specialists is, is pretty incredible. So thanks once again for that run through.